Good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing? Shabbat Shalom. It's me. My name is Mary Fernandez. Been part of this congregation um, for a long time. I would say maybe 12, 14 years, more or less. So it's quite an honor to, to be up here, and it's quite an honor to speak to um, our congregation and all of Dr. Patricia not being here today. So um, I just want to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to lift up your name on high today. For your name is holy, Father God. Your name is holy. And you, Father, you sit on the throne. And you are worthy to be glorified this morning. So, Father God, I just empty myself right this minute. And Lord, I just ask that you would fill this vessel, this servant, and that, Lord, that the words that I speak, Father God, would just minister to the hearts of your people, Lord. For you give us stories, you give us experiences to bless others, Lord. And that is my prayer and my hope today, Father God. That I would decrease, Lord, that you may increase. So, Father, I just thank you for this morning. I thank you for the for the people that are here today. I thank you, Father God, for those that could not be here, but they're watching on Facebook, Lord. Magnify your name in this place today, Father God. We give all glory, praise, and honor to your name, Lord. Amen. Thank you. So Pastor Reina asked me about a week and so ago, if I would, if I would um, be interested in sharing, and my first thought was, no. <laughs> it's kind of scary being up here. But, you know, we have to be faithful because when God gives us a message, when he gives us a story, we are then responsible to share. We are then responsible to share um, of his goodness. So the title of my message is, Pain is Not Forever. And that came to me, actually, through a dream. If you see, we're wearing our pink um, bands here, and this is my mother's picture. And that's actually the ribbon for breast cancer. And about a month ago, I had a dream. And I um, wasn't really thinking much about, you know, my mother's um, journey through breast cancer, which is now two years. And my dream, um, my sister, A.G., who a lot of you had been praying for her, and my mother and myself, we were all walking to a breast cancer event. In the breast cancer event, I look up, and there was a billboard the size of the screen sitting high on top with my mother in the middle, it's a picture we actually took, but I was not in it, it was two of my sisters. But in my dream, it was my mother, my sister, A.G., and myself. And she was wearing her, um, her little wrap, because at that time she had no hair. So she's wearing a wrap, she's smiling. My mother just smiled all the time, even through the pain, she smiled. So she's smiling. I'm smiling, my sister's smiling, and then um, as a tagline kind of in the billboard, the words read, pain is not forever. And I thought about it, and I thought, well, what an unusual dream. And there's a twofold part to this dream. Number one, it really comforted me, because as time passes, and you're no longer in the storm, the pain gets better, you know? But when you're in it, it feels like it's going to be forever. And so um, I went through a more recent painful experience with the one sister in the picture, and hers had nothing to do with cancer. Or maybe in the spiritual it was, but it was a sickness that she too had gone through. 
And that experience was very, very painful to me as well. And so um, God has a way of comforting me through dreams, through visions, through his word mainly. So anyway, I wanted to just start off with how I got the title. And I, I honestly thought it was just for me. I shared it with a few of the sisters here. But I guess the Lord had other plans. So I have three stories to share with you. And the reason why I was led to share these three stories with you is just to give you guys hope. God doesn't allow us to go through a storm, a situation for nothing, for no reason, just because God is up there thinking, how am I going to mess this one up today? Absolutely not. We go through these things for a purpose, for a reason. And the other thing is that when we actually share testimony and we share with others what God has done, we don't ever forget. And, you know, now we get to read the word of God and it's written for us. But back then, in the earlier years of the Bible, it used to be an oral tradition. And so the Bible was spoken. And the Bible was acted out. And now we quietly read the word. And, and um, part of the Bible is stories. And so you hear these stories, you read them out loud, and they encourage you. And I encourage you guys, if you guys have a story don't sit on your story because it may bless somebody else. So my three stories um, all have to do and are concerning with um, sickness, physical sickness, particularly cancer. So I'm going to share with you briefly um, my first experience so my first experience um, with cancer was with my first husband. His name was Senior Alexis, and he battled a two-year ba two um, battle with cancer. We were high school sweethearts, um, so life started really fast for us. Because we were in high school, we had babies, we got married, but you know what the most important thing that happened during this time? We made a covenant with God. We were introduced to the most amazing Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, which was going to change everything. Had no idea. Had no idea that The children that came, the marriage, what was more important was the covenant we made. So I'm going to focus more on, on the actual journey of, of, the, of the disease. Um, you know, there was a, a sudden lump, you know, in the neck, and you kind of never think, you know, a, a 21-year-old has a, a very severe tumor, but it kept growing. So he had a lump in his neck that just kept growing, growing, growing. So obviously went to the doctor, you know, the biopsy detected danger, but still had no idea that it was really bad. The results came back, and at this point I'm, I'm 20 years old. The res results come back, and it's... Um, Lymphoma non-Hodgkin's disease. And if you know anything about this disease, back, back in the early 90s, you know, there was just no cure for it. No cure for it at all. No hope. And so us, you know, being a 20 and a 21-year-old, we had to make, you know, big decisions, grown-up decisions. So we had to make a decision. And remember I talked to you about the covenant. Remember I talked to you about 
you know, salvation came to, to us. So my, um, my first husband had um, the faith of Job. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. And these words came out of his mouth. He left them out. And that must have been nothing but the Holy Spirit. So we go to UCLA, bone marrow transplant, no match. They searched the world. They got something close that came from Europe, which was about a 70, 80% match. And they said, well, this is pretty much your only hope. And we said, okay, we'll take it. It was a very, very difficult and painful um, two years because not only are you going through the chemo, the radiation, the emotions, it was, um, it was very difficult. And obviously, um, the transplant was not successful. It was just, it, by the time the transplant actually worked, it was a bit too late because his body had already started shutting down. But you know, and I don't, know why um, the Lord allowed him to speak last words and one would think well the last words would be I love you goodbye take care of my children it was none of that his very last words were these and they were in Spanish and I don't and I don't understand quite why they were in Spanish because he didn't like to speak Spanish let them know that the only Lord and Savior of this world is Jesus Christ. Let them know. And I thought he was just hallucinating. And he was so passionate about those last words and he was proclaiming. And the people there that were starting to um, start an IV, you know, give him sedation, he's losing his mind. What is he saying? I'm like, why aren't you telling them it's English? No, he wanted me to say it to them. Revelation 21, 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And you know, um, cancer took his physical body, but it did not take his spirit. It did not take his spirit. His spirit is with our Heavenly Father. Blessed, M Matthew 5, 4, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Honestly, when I was 23 years old and I was a young widow with two children, I could not understand this. I could not understand how I would be comforted. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do? But here's what God says, Exodus 33, 14. And he says, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Here's what he also said, Joshua 1, 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. So I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. And I, whenever I pray for people, I pray for them about this. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Why can I say that with such confidence? Why? Because he never left me. So I, I, would, I really wasn't going to cover this, but for some reason, you know, the Holy Spirit would just bring it back to my memory and bring it back to my memory. So I wanted to talk to you just briefly about grief. 
I know it's a touchy subject for a lot of people. And I know that if you have not lost somebody, you will one day. So this is grief. I'm going to step over here. So grief is something the size of our chest. And this is what we carry. So what's in grief? The grief box. Pain, sorrow, sadness, torment, regret, guilt, remorse, suffering, broken heart, and despair. And here's what I learned about grief. God allows us to carry our grief around. We're working, we're driving, but I got my grief. We're still functioning. No one can see this, but we feel it. It's on our chest. We walk around with it. It doesn't even have to be the death of someone. It could be the death of something in your life. Whatever's caused you grief, and God will allow you to carry this until one day you decide. And often we carry this out of guilt and regret. God, if I give you this grief, I don't love this person anymore. I don't remember them anymore. But here's what God showed me. So put this down, give it to me, pretend God's right here. And it took a long time for me. And I said, okay, Lord, I will trust you. I will trust you with this grief. And this is what God gave me instead joy so what's in your joy box is it still the same it's still the same size of your frame love hope peace relief blessings comfort but here's the thing you guys and sometimes we pick it up and give it back. And God is so merciful and patient with us that he allows us. He allows us to replace all this with his promises. But we have to be ready to let it go. It's not anybody's timing but your own timing. In God's timing. Grief versus joy. Now here's the good news of salvation. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. To those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. All this, all this. But did God ever lead me through this? No. Many years passed. So I'm going to talk to you about my second experience, and it's with my current um, husband, Art. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. And that was um, a quote from Corey Ten Boom. 
So with art, and I'm going to tell you, the story was very similar. Art had a lump. It was in his thigh. It was growing. And here I am in denial. It's just a pimple. It's just something else. It's nothing bad. But for a whole year, it grew and it grew and it grew. And it grew the size of a golf ball, purple. Dr. Margaret looked at it one day and she says, you got to get it checked. And of course, um, he had gotten it checked by a physician that was kind of agreeing with me, you know. It's not, we'll keep an eye on it. Maybe it's just fatty tissue, which is what I really wanted to hear. But deep down inside, I knew something was not right. So just like my my first time around um the dreadful news stop you know came to us january 2013 with the biopsy results again of a rare tumor that needs aggressive treatment now at this point you guys although it was many many years ago what are my first thoughts in the natural not again lord why me, Lord? Can I be honest with you guys? I had those thoughts. My first reaction was not, I will trust you, Lord. You're going to carry me through this one just like you did the other one. That was not my first reaction. My very first reaction was like, I don't want to do this again, Lord. Please tell me it's a bad dream. Please tell me it's not happening again. I remember when, um, don't be afraid to share what God's done for you because it's painful to remember. But it's also joyful to remember the outcome. Hallelujah. I remember sitting in, in the parking lot of the gym where I do all my praying and <laughs> all my seeking of the Lord. I was at the parking lot, and I just was having this conversation with God. And I told God those same words that I just shared with you. I don't want to do this again, Lord. And I had a clear vision of our Lord Jesus Christ when he didn't want to drink of that cup. He knew what was in that cup. The sins of the world, which included sickness, disease, malice, all of human nature in that cup. Now, I'm not comparing myself to our Lord, but I thought about how he felt when he said, Lord, let your will be done. I had an example before me to say that. Lord, let your will be done. But you know, I was not going to leave that parking lot until I made a decision. I could not leave that parking lot being unsure not willing to fight for, for this man. He needed his helper. My children needed their mother. They've seen me as a strong woman, and I cannot fail them now. So that day I made a decision. I said, Lord, your will be done. I will fight. I will do all that I can do, and I will trust you. So March 2013 through 24, uh, the following year, 2014, was the year of um, a whole year of treatment at City of Hope. 
you know, I didn't have your typical, like, you know, check in one day, eight hours, an hour drip. No, Art was in the hospital two days and five days at a time for a whole year. I honestly have so much respect for this man and honor for this man because he is a miracle from God. And I want everyone to know this. He's a miracle from God. God chose this man to be alive. Art had the will to fight. Art said, he said, are you okay with whatever happens to me? I said, of course I am. He says, because I'm placing my life in his hands, regardless of the outcome. I said, okay. Now, my first experience, I bargained with God. I wanted to have this faith that I believed that if I had enough faith, it was going to happen. But remember, God shows you things in every journey and situation. And in this situation, no longer was I going to do that. God, if you do this, I do this. You know, God, you raised Lazarus from the death. You're surely going to do this because I believe it and I believe it and I claim it. And it's done. God doesn't work that way. Above all else, we must surrender his perfect will. Not our perfect will. And not ask. So... We both place, you know, the situation in, in God's hands. And God fought for us. And I just want to read to you um, what I did, the, you know, during my first um, experience. I, I like to journal. So I journaled. And my daughter likes to write as well. So we actually created a page um, through Caring Bridge, and we journaled the whole thing. We would take turns, and I felt like I needed to do that because I never want to forget. So we journaled, and I'm going to read to you um, a part of that journal that my daughter wrote. My mom said it took a lot for authorization for treatment at City of Hope. It took a lot of the doctors pulling for us. Everybody was pulling for us. My mom told me that our insurance isn't contracted with City of Hope, therefore needed a special authorization. When we were at the hospital ta talking to the doctor, the doctor told my family that he has the same insurance and he cannot even be treated at City of Hope and he works there. That just showed me that God's hand is seriously in every step of our journey. Jesus says in Matthew 19, 26, that with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And I truly believe that given all that has happened thus far, God told my mom he was giving Ard his best. And God really did say that to me, you guys. I remember being um, frustrated with the insurance company. Is this going to happen? I wanted Art to get the best. But because I'm in healthcare and I know how to appeal and I know where to go and I know where to look, I'm, it's me, my efforts. I'm going, going, going. And God had to stop me. And speak to me. And he said, who made City of Hope? Who made these doctors? Everything's made by my hand. It came from me. I'm giving my son. He didn't even say, I'm giving your husband, Mary. He said, I'm giving my son my very best. And I thought, Lord, you love him so much. 
you love art so much. And that gave me so much peace. And after walking around City of Hope's facility, he truly is. The facility is beautiful. The employees, nurses, and doctors are very friendly and welcoming. The environment is peacefully, is peaceful and calm, which alleviates the looming worries. Though this trial is challenging on my entire family, God says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10, I believe through God's strength and grace, we will all get through this. I believe it. I be this is what Jasmine wrote. Pay attention, you guys. This is what she wrote. I believe it will be a testimony of the confounding miracles God can perform. His word says he uses the simple to confound the wise, and already arts doctors are amazed. This was at the very, very beginning of his treatment, guys. He didn't even have one round yet. In conclusion, my daughter wrote, I want to end this with these words. I trust you, though it isn't easy. Sometimes the pain in life makes you seem far away. But I'll trust you. I need to know you're here through the tears and the pain, through the heartache and rain. I'll trust you. That's the song she sang. So during this time, the Lord says, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. For when I am weak, he is strong. Amen. So it's now been five years. And um, my husband is healthy. He's alive. And he's um, taking his day serious and being all that God has called him to be as a husband, as a father, as the servant of the Lord, and as a grandfather. <laughs> Okay, so my mom, like, is there more? Yes, there's more. We're wearing these. So Art had already been a year in remission. So this is year three. First year was um, a whole year of treatment, and then two years, I believe, of remission. So October 2016, my mother calls me. She has a lump. She has a lump in her breast. And I thought, maybe it's just a little lump. I said, okay, mom, I'm off on Monday. I'll take you to the doctor on Monday. It was Columbus Day or something. I didn't rush to take her to the hospital because honestly, I didn't think it was anything. So I go. And she shows me. It was the biggest thing I've seen. It was the size of our slump, too. It was like the size of a golf ball. And I said, Mom, how do you not, how did you not see this? Tell us about this. She says, it just happened. I'm like, okay, here we go. So that started, again, the waiting the uncertainty. Now this time, I had already gone through arts, and I, I said to the Lord, I was journaling at that time already, 
I was already journaling, and I said to the Lord, Lord, my heart is broken again. And this is a scripture that God gave me during this time. Psalm 61, 2. From the ends of the earth, I will call out to you. Whenever my heart is faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Whenever, in another translation is how I really read it. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Who's the rock? Who's the, who does the leading? Who, who's doing the ushering? The Holy Spirit. Yet I didn't know that this verse was going to get me through this time. Didn't know how. The, the, the dynamics were, were totally different because now I'm a daughter. This is my mother. There's so many other players involved. Not, I have more control over here my husband we prayed together we agreed it was easy we were on the same page our children we were on the same page now with my mother it was a different story more trusting I thought I had to trust a lot when I trusted the Lord with my first two experiences but with this one it was a lot of trusting when we got the diagnosis that my mother did have stage four breast cancer, it felt unreal to me. I didn't even ask why anymore, none of that. But you know what happened? The pain was overwhelming. I literally felt like my right arm was cut off. If, if you can picture the pain of that. This is my mother. She took care of me. She was a strong one. So my family, because of my experience, they're like, you're team captain. <laughs> so during this time, it's what got me through. I journaled. I asked God. I prayed. I fasted. I was reading this journal. I had to pull it out. I was reading this journal um, during the week, and the pain came again. Now she's fine. My mom is doing good. Thank God the Lord healed her. But sometimes when we remember the pain, greater is the joy, right? So I just wanted to read you one thing I wrote, a couple of things I wrote. I'm here. I wrote this around this time. His strength is perfect. Raised in his power, the weak become strong. It's a song, actually. I keep hearing it, hearing it, and hearing it over and over. Let us run the race that is before us and never give up. Hebrews 12, 1. Lord, in this race of life, Help me finish strong. Help me endure during the trials of life. Remember I talked to you about being overwhelmed? This day I was overwhelmed with many blessings. So during this time in October, two years ago, remember I told you about being overwhelmed with pain, pain I could not remove, pain I could not control. It was such a storm in my life that I had to get through. But I knew God was going to get me through it. You still feel the pain, though. I'm not going to lie to you and say, yep, yeah, Jesus covers it all and it's all okay. You still feel the pain. And yes, it's true, he will sustain you he will carry you through but it still hurts 
So that night, um, Jasmine and Justin insisted to see us. We were at a birthday party and we're like, you really want to go out to dinner? And they insisted. So I'm like, okay. My husband will always want to eat. So <laughs> we ended up going to our favorite restaurant where we grew up in Bowen Park. And they had three gifts for, for us. One gift was, two gifts were for me from my daughter and my son. And it was, um, it was a cup and it was also a journal. They know I like to journal. It's a little journal and also um, a little plate. You know, she is, I forgot what it, what it said, but she's kind of clothed in strength. And it, they were very encouraging um, verses in those. The cup said, you know, the, what did the cup say, Jasmine? She's clothed in strength and does not fear the future. Okay. So um, I was already blessed with that. So the third gift was from my husband, Art, and he opened it, and it was a onesie. And the onesie said, you're going to be grandparents. <laughs> I just got my mom's results that week. And I wrote in my journal that it felt literally like you're in the middle of a storm with the, the news of our grandbaby. God needed to give me this. I needed this. It was rays and rays of sunshine in the midst of the storm. That's what it felt like. And I said, okay, I can fight. I can fight. So my mom obviously is a trooper, and I will end with this. I'm going to tie a couple of things in together. Um, you know, my mom is a sweet woman. She doesn't say no. She did everything we told her to do. Um, we put her on a, di on a diet. We um, gave her plenty of vitamins. She did everything just right. But one day, you know, and my husband was there for, like, the, the visits, you know, some of the chemo treatments, the big days. My husband and a lot of us were there to support her. But, you know, with my mom, seeing Art was like, you guys are okay, but Art's here. Why was that? Because Art had gone through what she's going through. His presence gave my mother hope. So one day, you know, my mom's tired already. She's going through chemo, no taste buds, and we're doing the best for my mom, you know? And she looks at Art, <laughs> and she says, can I eat regular food? <laughs> and Art says, you eat whatever you want. Oh, my goodness, you would have thought you just, I don't know. So then from that day, she had Art's approval <laughs> to eat whatever she wanted. <laughs> but she bounced back up. And what God showed me is that, and I'm so grateful, so grateful for my husband for doing this, that he um, prayed for my mother. I prayed for my mother, you know, and we were all praying for my mother in the congregation. But it meant so much that Art prayed for her. Why? Because he had been there. He knows the pain. Like he said, when God spoke to Art about his own treatment, God told Art he would be healed. Now, I don't know if that was going to be here or in heaven, but he would be healed. However... He was going to go through everything a cancer patient experiences. The fear, the pain, everything. And so many times, Art has encouraged other people that can, had gone through cancer. But he helped my mom. He spoke hope, life. Gave her permission to eat whatever she wanted. So I'm going to conclude with this. So we have the hope that one day 
there will be no more tears, no more pain, and no more sorrow. Amen. Thank you for your attention. strange how cancer is so big right now, but we know that the Lord can take care of it. But there are so many of you out there that are probably going through other painful situations. But as her teaching is, pain is not forever. Remember that. No matter what you're going through, it is only but for a season. You will get through this with the help of our Heavenly Father. He will walk you through it. He will lead you by his spirit. Would you all please stand? Lift up your hands that I may bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen and amen.